what people are doing is they're wanting to go back to something and it's a trauma response it's a trauma response you're wanting to go back and do something that isn't necessary now and you're also denying the respect that you should have for that divine union between your twin flame prosperity this is a side mystic coming to you with another message to help you free your heart and soul thank you for coming to my channel if you're new here welcome make sure you hit the like and subscribe button also make sure you hit that notification bell so you can get notified every time I upload a new video I am a spiritual feminine embodiment coach and I help women access their higher self through understanding the earth and the universe Today we're going to be talking about polygamous relationships and how black women are being conned, okay? And it's time that we talk about this. It's time that I just get my solid opinion out there because I've done a lot of videos on this topic before in the past and I feel like this is just my final it video because I keep seeing, you know, black women, Afro-Indigenous women going through scenarios that are just unnecessary if they could just see and read between the lines here uh, when it comes to polygamous relationships. Now, this is a disclaimer. I... I don't care what your relationship status is like if you want to be in whatever kind of relationship polygamous polyandrous um, polyamorous and every other kind of relationship there is whatever you want to do with your life and in your relationship style by all means experience life that's what you came here to do you came here to experience came here to learn grow all of that stuff however when it comes to polygamous relationships I feel that this specific relationship type is being forced onto black women especially afro indigenous women in spiritual communities in conscious communities in communities where we the goal is specifically to become more enlightened this uh, way of or relationship style has just been thrown onto black women and it's been by black men it's been by our men and this is the last video I'm making on this and this is gonna be the most potent video that I make on this because I am going to be debunking all of the myths that People use to support why polygamous being polygamous and having multiple sisters in your relationship somehow benefits the black community somehow benefits a, a people us as a people and all of that is an illusion okay and it's being created so that the afro indigenous womb the Afro-Indigenous woman, the primordial life force of this planet can continue to give away its power, give away its energy, its authority to beings and entities that do not want this earth to resurrect, that do not want the new earth to actually become and be in its highest form, in its highest self that don't really want the evolution of this planet. They want to go backwards and they want to stay the same. And the point of evolution and, and growing and getting better is never to go back and do what's been done for thousands of years. The point of it is to do something new, something better, something extraordinary, something innovative, something that has never been done 
before and it never existed before in the same way that it ever has existed before all right so the first myth that i'm gonna be debunking around why polygamous relationships are somehow the best relationships for people to be in is the myth that black men are designed to spread their seed so polygamy is promoted to afro-indigenous women under the pretense that black men are more promiscuous they have this natural urge to want to procreate they want to spread their seed and they want to have 25,000 babies in their lifetime um it's in there it's in a man's nature to be promiscuous and overtly sexual what we're not seeing from this data that people are coming up with based on biology is that a lot of this data is skewed because a lot of what we're the data that's being shown is coming from the fact that we're we've been living in a patriarchal society since colonialism and that's been for at least 500 years and because of this women haven't been fully themselves women haven't been fully themselves since that time we've had to compromise we've had to pretend we've had to silence ourselves and play the game of patriarchy literally um as a survival mechanism so the evidence that people are coming up with to support this is reference from timelines and societies that heavily enable men to be undisciplined and lack spiritual connection to their power and purpose and especially to the earth and for that reason men think that it's normal and absolutely natural to think nothing of being extremely sexual and waste away their sperm it's actually actually been proven that the more ejaculation a man does spreading of the seed the less life force he has available to him so in other words it ages him it ages him faster whereas when a woman orgasms it extends her lifespan and it extends the lifespan of all everything around her all the everything that's within you know the area and the land she's on when a woman orgasms the rivers and waters are flowing more uh, accurately the skies are clearer the uh, the uh, fruits and the the harvests is more abundant you know the soil is more fertile when a woman orgasms okay so who's really supposed to be the one having you know doing doing the most of that here why do you why do you really feel like women are being promoted to shy away from their sexual energy while men are being promoted to be extremely sexual i feel like that though those roles are reversed and they're reversed on purpose because those two energies masculine energy is naturally when in his divine masculine energy is naturally more disciplined is naturally wanting to have one thing to be loyal to this is why when we lived in in the times where honor and chivalry was like a thing knights and things like that they swore their loyalty to one to one thing to one cause you know what i'm saying that is the way masculine energy naturally operates is to be um is to be disciplined and is to have discipline in their sexual energy whereas women should be promoted to have sexual and sensual freedom and learn their sexuality and learn their bodies and understand who they are not be ashamed of this part of themselves but instead and you know this is why we have so much overtly sexual sexual things going on as far as when it comes to um feminine energy is because this energy is kind of like it's like you're not allowed to go there 
You're not allowed to do this thing. You're not allowed to explore this in a, in a really deep and profound and spiritual way. And there's like a cutoff to where it can only be explored in uh, the superficial, physical ways. So myth number two is that there aren't enough black men to go around. I know statistically there is a certain percentage of black men in jail, a certain amount of black men being influenced to be gay, a certain amount of black men being killed by police or by each other. There's all of these statistics about what's happening to our two black men, Afro-Indigenous men. I understand those statistics about Afro-Indigenous men. I do. But the thing that's not productive about using statistics behind your reasoning to do something is it only continues to limit you into the same energy that built and created those statistics. So basically, when you, sus when you subscribe to those statistics, you're feeding your own energy and power into the energy field that created those statistics. In essence, you're attempting to use reality to support your way of life when that's backwards. Your way of life should be supporting the reality you are creating because the reality that already is, that's done, that's over with. It's already been created. So for you to use reality for your reasonings as to why you should continue to support this reality. So basically when you use that reality to support a new reality, you're only creating more of that reality. It's like when they teach you in the law of attraction, if when, when you tell a universe that you want something, you can't say, I want more money because I don't have no money. Then you just gonna keep not having any money. Like, and that's the same, that's the same dynamic. It's like, you're saying, I want to have more healthy, thriving Afro-Indigenous Black men because there aren't any healthy, thriving Afro-Indigenous Black men. You cannot use that as the foundation for what you are attempting to create because your foundation is faulty. Like, it's already, your foundation is lack. So you're only going to create more lack. From that you're operating from a lack mentality when you think like this I remember when so I remember when somebody told me I couldn't charge the prices that I wanted to charge for my work and my business because um, black people don't have no money or because blah 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 or blah 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 or blah 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 like okay like all of we can find a whole bunch of statistics that are proving how that's you know true in in whatever reality you know or whatever realm or whatever energy field we can find a bunch of reasonings why that's true but first of all like i'm not even thinking about that i'm not even thinking about only selling to a certain uh, sphere of people and also I don't think that that sphere of people is you know broke I don't think that black people are broke so it's like and I don't think that most pe black people are broke I think what I've seen what what gets shown to us on Google or on these maps or on these statistics might show us one thing but what you got to understand is there is a vast world that we live in like a lot of us are very small minded and we live in a very small like y'all people will put themselves in a small small world when there's a very vast world out there even beyond what we're being told exists and even beyond what we're being told exists and this is a part of being connected to the earth this is a part of being um intertwined with the energy of abundance with the energy of love and expansion is being intertwined with and connected to the earth is being embodied 
if you're not embodied you will you will let these lies that society has created uh, and not just any society i'm talking about the patriarchal colonial society that has made us to believe a lot of things about ourselves and about our our life and our being that just isn't true will make you feel like that's true it's time that afro-indigenous women really embrace that it, there is no lack there is no lack for no one there is no lack for no one and when you um when you understand your mind's connection to the reality you won't buy into these statistics you won't buy into what somebody is trying to tell you is the truth and not this isn't just for uh, men that come into your life but this is for society this is for the the patriarchal man who runs everything who is telling you you know who you are what who you should be and what you should believe about yourself my response to that um comment of lack was you know there are plenty of people who want to do business with me there are plenty of afro-indigenous people who want to do business with me i don't really care who you are but i am geared towards helping my own people however i understand that the work that i do and my heart and my soul is so divine that it goes beyond the flesh it goes beyond you know what i think it's supposed to be like or it's supposed to look like i have a a, a, a a vague you know premise of knowing you know the type of people who will want to work with me but ultimately spirit is going to bring those people to me in the same way that i view my 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 soul work the same way that i view what I, my purpose and what I came here to give to this world, that's the same way that I view my sexual energy. I view it in the same intimate way, right? And so I know that I'm not limited. I'm not limited by color, creed. I'm not limited by anything. So another thing that this myth promotes is it promotes afro-indigenous women to feel like they are somehow insufficient without a man in their life like somehow insufficient unless there is a men there is men in their life and i don't i, I think that this is you know another lack premise because this is something that everyone has to come to terms to right and especially as an afro-indigenous woman especially you know when you are in your maiden energy when you are in your your you know newly embodied feminine energy you associate a lot of who you are with other people with who other people are you identify yourself with your uh, men your family um everyone you know outside of you but when you are good with you no matter what your situation i don't care if you have you know if you're a single mother of 10 children i don't care who you are or what your life looks like you are sufficient by yourself like you can create and and draw to you and magnetize to you anything so this also kind of breeds a belief in afro-indigenous women that there is number one that there is a lack of men out there for them and number two that they have lack within them and that's why they they have to act on this lack of afro-indigenous men so that they can survive it's all this like survival stuff and it's like let's get out of there Let's get out of there and let's be creative. Let's be happy. Let's be joyful. Let's be playful. The third thing that this myth insinuates is that Afro-Indigenous women can't create Afro-Indigenous children without Afro-Indigenous men. We carry the mitochondrial DNA. When we have children, we pass down that gene 
through our flesh and bone and blood, right? We pass it down through, through our body, right? We, we give our children a body. The genes are just information that the body can use now to create itself. But essentially, we give our children their bodies. We govern being able to pass down lineages, right? Um, we pass down the lineage. We pass down the name. We pass down the body, the, the, the being. And that's why in Afro-Indigenous communities in America, I don't want to call it Native American because, I mean, that's not been names been hijacked. But our tribes were matriarchal. Our tribes were matriarchal. They were passed down through the woman. It wasn't, you know, the man took a woman and then put his last name on her. It was matriarchal. So the third myth is that monogamy was brought to afro-indigenous people through colonialism nobody brought us anything to us we created everything our skin is literally sunlight encapsulated in, in into our skin our melanin is sunlight in physical form we are the physical embodiment of source energy afro-indigenous people are the most creative people on the planet we created everything including this realm that we live in when we get into this mindset of talking about oh they brought that to us they did this to us they didn't no they just took what we already had and made it into something different right and made it and twisted it and did something else with it but they didn't bring anything to us including slavery they didn't they didn't invent slavery right like that was they didn't invent slavery that wasn't something that they invented so monogamy was not brought to us polygamy was something that we did in the in the era of war that we went through after foreign beings came to this realm and and decided that they wanted to take over this realm with the energy of war through this energy of war there was a lot of genocide there was a lot of things that went on and so because of that there was a severe depletion in the amount of men that were available to be with their were twin their twin flame because back then we also knew that when we came into the this existence that there was another person that also came into this this existence that was our twin flame this reality that we're living in can only be experienced through masculine or feminine energy not both together so when you're in when you're incarnating into your into your vessel into your into your bloodline you are living through your feminine expression and you have a twin flame that is living through the masculine expression and this was the original understanding that we had and this is why for every woman there was a man like this was known this was understood for every woman there was a man and you come together and you make for life that's it you made for life because that's who you came here to be with and through the twin flame union you can ascend into a even higher version of your being because that's what the twin flame union is for in the first place for your soul to become one what happened is monogamy became monogamy and that's it there is no soul there is no flame there is no purpose there is no higher ascension behind it it's a superficial union it's not about going back to polygamy because polygamy was only used because of that period of war and genocide that we went through polygamy was used as a way for women to be supported during that time because there was a so there wasn't there was way less men that there is now y'all talking about there ain't a lot of men now 
ain't no genocides and war going on now right in a way yeah in a way but not like how it was going on back then so people are what people are doing is they're wanting to go back to something and it's a trauma response it's a trauma response you're wanting to go back and do something that isn't necessary now and you're also denying the respect that you should have for that divine union between your your twin respected flame. this natural understanding of the universe in the process of souls incarnation here into this earth plane so the last myth that i'm going to debunk is the myth that polygamy is somehow the road to freedom from the matrix or this this imprisoned life that we're living in in society freedom has nothing to do with the amount of people you're allowed to have sex and procreate with that don't sound like freedom to me that sounds like you're imprisoning yourself how does you as a woman right and you have multiple two three four whatever other women with you all having babies at the same time or maybe you're not whatever but when you come up with this oh he has to spread his seed i'm under the assumption that we all having babies together we haven't we all having babies back to back you know how does any of that equate to you being free when there's only one guy and say yeah this man is a millionaire right y'all are also forgetting that you know as a woman you, you have emotional requirements right you have you you don't you don't need any emotional validation right you don't need in any of that because i believe that women should be emotionally validating themselves but you require a certain emotional energy from your relationship with men this is why it's so important to understand energy and to understand the um universal law in astrology because when you understand sex and the energy of sex you know that the energy of sex is ruled by scorpio and you know that scorpio is someone that is very intimate deep they're not somebody that wants to be with multiple people all the time because they are the epitome of sexual energy they're the epitome of creation they know that it is it is a sacred union right they know that it's a sacred process and if they're ever frivolous and you know um doing it in a way that is detached that's not that's not the primal energy of sexuality maybe if you move to another sign like aquarius or gemini or somebody who's in their head then you could do something like that but when we're understanding the primal forces of of sexual energy of it's not a freedom energy it's a it's a energy that you take root in you t it's a it's a psychic energy that you take root in that you ground yourself in it's like emotional grounding so sexual energy is not being is not about being free and and creating freedom go to aquarius for that go to gemini for that maybe even talk to libra for a little bit but even libra don't and don't really do all of that like libra is not that detached like you want to understand sexual energy in a way that is aligned and it makes sense so if you're talking about things that are outside of actual procreation and you're talking about things that have to do with genuine friendships that have to do with genuine you know social agreements and getting together and loving and creating community and things like that it doesn't have to involve sex it doesn't have to involve procreation like i can do that without procreating with you you know what i'm saying 
and it's also like y'all are making it seem like quantity is more than quality who said that you need to have 50 million children to change the world you got 50 million idiots come out of your womb <laughs> right it, it's about valuing quality over quantity and this is another you know this is another feminine aspect this is another aspect of understanding and being embodied in the earth's energy so i feel like i've said enough already you guys um i'm not talking about this no more if you guys have questions i might if it's interesting but let me know what you guys th thought about this video in the comments make sure you like and subscribe if you're interested in getting my free blueprint how to cultivate discernment and set boundaries in relationships hit the link in the description it'll get sent straight to your inbox also make sure you check out my book the great woman resurrected and yep i will talk to you guys later peace